Welcome everyone. Um, the Stripen B Art Festival recognized that we are on the ancestral and unceded homelands of Han Kaminam, Homish, speaking people, and are grateful to be on this territory. So um, hello all the lovers, art lovers, neighbors, creative. My name is Suvimon Titisut. I'm a coordinator um, of the STRIKE team. So welcome to the STRIKE Burnaby Arts Festival. It is with special excitement that I'm pleased to welcome experimental phot uh, photographer host, uh, Grant Witters and his guest artist, um, Lilico, uh, landscape painter, Jane Appleby to our special STRIDE event artist talk. Grant is a playful multidisciplinary artist with a passion for photography and for elevating uh, curiosity and creativity in all our lives. With a special guest, Jane, Jane Appleby, she is an expressive painter inspired by the Canadian landscape and by her outdoor adventures. They are going to share their motivation, lessons, and permission to create tonight, giving us lots of practical ideas that will help you execute to your artwork. So please join me in welcoming Grand Witters and Jane Appleby. Thank you. Yay, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Suvi. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to, to come to you tonight uh, via Zoom uh, during the Stride Festival. It's been fun. Um, Jane and I have had a chance to, to chat once in a while over, over the past year since our last event together. And uh, uh, I know I'm excited to dive back into it, to, to uh, take on some of the challenges of, of art and life uh, with you, my friend. How are you tonight? Great. Thank you very much, Grant, for having me and, and everyone for showing up to join in our talk to hopefully motivate each other in our works and, uh, you know, just be thankful for what we can do uh, during this time, especially. And it was so great to be able to go to your lovely show uh, um, last night, Grant. To, and, and I'm already wire, fired up uh, with some new ideas uh, in my head with uh, some of the uh, exciting abstractions that came out from your video inst installation. It was awesome. Are you trying? Are you trying to tell me that it may have resonated with you a little bit? Yeah, like not nice. only a little bit. I, I couldn't leave. So this is you always awesome. wonder why. Awesome. These, how does art do that, right? This is why yes. we're here. We, we always cool. we muse over these things, and we think, can our our own art do that? And and yes, I believe everybody's art can do that. So. Yeah, and you, when, when, when it's happening, when it happens, it's a special, uh, special moment to, to embrace, and we're going to get into that for sure. Um, so you and I, we, uh, Jean and I had a, a chat um, a couple of weeks ago as we were kind of going over what we might be covering tonight, and we came up with uh, our kind of distilled down into uh, kind of three areas, the, and that's the title of our talk tonight, the motivation, resonance, and permission to create. Um, some, and these, these highlight some, some challenges and some new perspectives and new ways of looking at uh, creativity and, and I'm going to talk about how it even affects our lives, I think, um, in, uh, coming up. Um, but I wanted to give, I want to give Jane a chance to talk about uh, motivation at this time because I know it's um, difficult to, to feel motivated and, and you and I talked a bit about that. The, the news is kind of crappy. The uh, there are a lot of a lot of things going on. COVID isolation, a lot of anxiety out there. People are having a hard time, sort of getting getting the job done. Um, and then, when you're a creative or you're you're living a life where you otherwise enjoy uh, making creative decisions or having creativity and art in your life, sometimes it's hard to kind of get back get past that the, the challenges of life that are that are kind of in your way to sort of enter into that space of of creativity. Um, I know you you uh, address some of those things in our conversation. Can you share with us some of your thoughts on that? I guess the first thing I think about is, well, first thing I know is that we all experience times of um, uncreative moments and depressions even and anxieties over things. And I have actually tried to uh, correlate whether that can actually be a motivator. And it can because it, I feel that sometimes when we go deep, and we see even sadness, uh, when we go deeper into ourselves, um, we get to know a little bit more about how we feel about things. And then we're open to try to express that, uh, alleviate it and welcome something else, something to create, something that we can add to it to, 
to bring about something new. And so I sometimes try not to push aside things that are happening around me, including COVID. It's not, it's hard not to, but to realize you sort of walk along with it. And what's the smallest thing I can do that day? Like what instrument can I pick up today and use it? So and what, what one advice, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop yeah. there because there was a, yeah. something interesting you mentioned that you, you take a moment to, to notice those things that are happening. And sometimes these are the challenges, the difficult things. How, what advice could you give to, to others who might not be able to watch for those, those little special moments where you can stop and go, hey, this, this is happening. I don't have to push it aside. What can it teach me or how can it inspire me? How would someone open up to that? I, I guess it, it is hard to sort of, because we want to push it away, so we don't want to acknowledge it. But if, if we can take away the fear that it's going to completely squash us, uh, like just realize it won't kill you. You know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so even art making won't kill you. So just do it. Um, and I think you start to then be comfortable with acknowledging those uncomfortable experiences. And I think when you can do something that you don't have to even think about, uh, just, you know, play. Oh, so these words came to me. You either can play with something, play. Um, and then there, there's that time that you can imitate somebody else's work, like just sort of think about how you might portray the same colors or, or you know, we're talking about not copy writing and, and making your, you know, work out of that. It's more to imitate somebody else's work, something that resonated again, we're back to that and, and try to just do something that's similar. And the last thing would be to use your imagination. And I think that takes a lifelong uh, time of, of practicing it. You know, we, we do it as children. I think that's why they're so good at art. And then we get so um, into our lives, which we have to organize and et cetera, as you know. Um, but I think it, when we can do those kinds of things still like play and like children do, they imitate, you know, their parents with their work and follow along. If we can do that in our art, you know, play with the, the lenses that or, or videos as you did, or for me, it would be different brushes or tools. I'm excited to find new tools to use these rubber mallet things. And um, so I try to see what they'll do. And, and I think the biggest thing is to not to go and paint a painting. Like I never tell myself, I'm going to go and produce a great work today. I never do that because you're just setting yourself up for like, you know, I, I make it part of my life. So mm -hmm. I don't even, when I went skiing to, to get it, uh, inspirations for these pieces, um, I'm going skiing, I'm not going painting, but I sketch up there, I bring my mm -hmm. paint, I paint this little painting is a little plein air that I, I'll just happen to do at the end of the day, just, oh, I got my paints here. Well, I wonder if, what, what a help, you know, I know it takes a long time to set up. And if I think about all the negatives about why I shouldn't do it, I won't do it. So I think about for the positive, I skied, I want to put this, you know, I want to stay up here. Oh, I wonder how I can set up my little easel box, you know, in the sun. I might as well just enjoy the sun and do that, like fiddle with my easel box. So it's almost like <laughs> doing just the simplest things. Do you ever, uh, just almost as an yeah. aside, do you ever uh, use watercolor paints? Yes, quite often, because they're quick, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool yeah. to be out skiing? And I don't know if you've done <laughs> this. Tell me if you've done this. Melt some snow. I have. Yeah, and painted with it? Yeah, but it's, oh. it's crystallized. It, it makes little crisp, like little blotchy. But that's okay, yeah. I got some color down. Yeah, and it's white snow, so it's easy. You just put a few little hints. <laughs> it's creative, though. What a, See, what a, great, what a great way to, to make that a, uh, a yeah. site-specific, in-situ uh, work uh, work of art. Yeah, Good and for you. Charcoal, I'm, I'm charcoal works well, too. And anybody could try it. Like, mm. when we get snow, you take a piece of paper. Like, the, my latest video on YouTube, please go check it out, uh, my YouTube channel, Jane Appleby Art. I, I basically sketch on Burnaby Lake these little grasses and trees, just marks. Yeah. And and I say in the video, you know, if you feel unmotivated, just get a sketchbook or a piece of paper and draw three lines. But you won't stop there. If you mm -hmm. actually will draw one line, mm -hmm. you'll draw another one to relate it. And three can make some kind of interesting correlation. There's, there's probably some uh, some proverb that talks about, yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, it's the idea of baby steps or, breaking, you know, don't think of something as a huge project where there's pressure and lots of planning. Every, it all, it, you know, it's all built on small steps and you've just offered some ideas for for yeah. taking those some of those small steps without big expectations 
but then that momentum of that desire to want more, like, well, I'm going to draw a fourth line. You know? Exactly. And who knows where routine. it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And, the, and the, I guess the biggest thing I'd like to say is keep it simple, keep it for the day. Like, you know, you can have these plans. All, all, I think we, we like to set up, okay, if I prime the canvas today and if I put, you know, the first coat down tomorrow, it, it can be a way that if you, if that's how you like to work and you'll tick it off, then fine. But for me, I like to have it as part of my life. So I just go to see what my studio, if I left the light on, like I'll just go to the studio. I'm not going to even pick up a pencil. I'm going to go and visit my studio. And it's interesting what I'll see down there. It's, it could be a book and I don't do any art, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say is yeah. be led by your creative area, your place that, uh, that you'd like. So, to. so your art, your art practice doesn't always mean art making. Correct. Cool. Correct. So that's a great entry point for people who yes. even want to start as an artist uh, or feeling you need to, to uh, do a reset or a restart or a how am I going to get in the, into that zone again? You're talking about going back to you talked about going to familiar uh, places, familiar things or trying new things, but even yeah. try things that that could inspire something unexpected, uh, because if you try if you go into too many expectations, um, or you say, I'm going to make a, a, a masterpiece today, that's a, a pretty big ask of yourself. And yes. if, there are, if there are already challenges in front of you, like, you know, yeah. sure. commute, commuting, you know, fill in the blank, challenges in life. Um, if you're just adding on a big expectation of, of uh, creating a masterpiece, that's a, that's a pretty tough. And I say, if you don't go and at least be with your um, instruments or your papers, if you're a writer or your lenses, uh, you're not going to be able to do the things you do in life because that's where you're kind of in the flow. And if you can at least have that uh, part of you, I think we can take on other things in life. So I think it's really good to keep creative for health. It's almost like eating a vitamin. <laughs> so you're saying that, that yeah. art can impact other parts of our lives? Yes, I do. Wow. And you know, we... we, we <laughs> you're speaking my language. <laughs> that resonated with you, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, Do we want to speak on that? Yes. Um, when I just for your information, folks, when Jane and I first started talking again in this in this initial meeting, um, Jane was going talking a bit about uh, resonance without using the word resonance, um, and it was really in line with some things that I've been uh, experimenting with, thoughts that have been kind of rolling around in my head, and. Um, the idea of resonance is actually a, a, a physical physics type thing where, you know, say you bang a, a tuning fork and then you stop the tuning fork and something else nearby that happened to share the, the uh, a natural resonance frequency with that tuning fork is now vibrating. You know, a, a wire or a, a, a wooden panel or a guitar string or something. So it's literally when a vibration in one object causes something else to vibrate. So that's, that's that kind of resonance. But I got to thinking about why we like certain things, why, we, why one person might love a piece of art um, and, the, and standing next to them is someone else who is looking at the same piece of art or hearing the same piece of art, experiencing the same piece of art, and they just don't get it or it doesn't really move them. I think that's a lot about resonance and there's a, uh, a natural um, alignment with, uh, with learned and experienced ideas of aesthetics and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, beauty or what is you know beautiful what is ugly what is disturbing what is joyful um, and then if something if I pass by something or I'm listening to the radio or I see something and something sort of falls into the property shaped hole in the in the in the in the game and it, it triggers that that resonance uh, response and um, it's hard to define it's hard to explain what that is but it's different for every person and have you, you've obviously experienced it. Can you give an example or do you recall when, when totally, totally. Um, yeah, I, I, there have been times, there was a time I went to a, a gallery, uh, it was like an open house, part of the, I think it was part of the East side culture crawl a couple of years ago. And I went into this space and there was this, uh, sort of collage piece on the wall, uh, and the collage elements were made out of uh, old topographic maps. And it was this beautiful, almost quilted pattern, but it was made, made of maps and it, I literally stopped in my tracks and I felt this uh, uh, tension in my gut and I, I was just mesmerized by this piece and I 
while I was loving what I saw, I, I actually literally said out loud, what's going on here? <laughs> what am I feeling? Because it was, uh, and I mean, I love old maps. I love repurposing things and using one thing for a purpose that wasn't necessarily meant for, especially when it comes to art. Um, so that was, that was one example. Um, and it's, it's not that, it's not that different from hearing a song on, on the radio or on a, on a CD or a record that you've had. We all hopefully I have a feeling our audience is probably all people who understand what a record is. Um, but when there's a track that, that, that it just really, uh, speaks to you and it, it, uh, even just that day, maybe even it did something special. So you put it on repeat, you you back it up and you play it again. So those, how much those, do you those think moments that, are amazing. Can I ask you, Grant, how, how much do you think that influenced your next project? Like, uh, or or just helped, made you feel uplifted your spirit and, and helped you through the day or just kind of... Well, what did it, it's, okay, it's hard to say. I mean, it, it, it can do that. It can be a, a positive sort of amplifying experience. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But imagine having something that resonates, but it, it instead of the, the game piece falling into the, the, the happy, joyful, positive shaped uh, space in the, in the game board, it, it fell into a, a sad one. Because you can actually resonate, I believe you can resonate with things that are, that are dark or that remind you of loss or that just make you kind of uh, crushes you, but kind of in a beautiful way. <laughs> Um, you know, some a beautiful poem or the, the lyrics to a song you never heard before, but you were ready to hear them that day. So you're resonating with that again. And so it's not always about uh, the beautiful, positive, positive yes. things. Um, so yes, I believe those those positive experiences can propel uh, propel me further, especially if I'm currently working on a project. It'll energize me, or it might even change my path a bit. Um, but hopefully, the, the the sad ones or the darker ones. Uh, provide reflection instead of just shutting me down and making me feel, feel awful. It just makes me pause maybe and uh, take a moment. So does, does it offer growth uh, for, for yourself as a person and that's important for uh, art making? Totally, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I say that if you make enough art that is uh, genuine and that comes from your heart, your, your body of work ends up becoming uh, autobiographical. So if someone looks at a piece or sees a few pieces that you've created side by side or they follow your work, they should be able to, uh, in my view, know who you are. I think that's the, kind of the, 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 uh, the beauty or almost a purity of, of what art can, can do if, if an artist is really true to what they see or what they feel uh, and who they are, then so, that should, that'll be reflected in all the work that they do. So how hard have you found it, Grant, to keep on that path because it is it is a sort of one of you know deep inner uh, emotions and and you're you know you and your work it can be lonely uh, mm -hmm. but so so we're back to this sort of how does the resonance continue to motivate you or do you look for other resonance or does your work give you resonance uh, well I, I often sort of preach the idea that that uh, of the healing power of art and over the past year I've really had to rely on that and it's real it is so yeah. so real um, and at times there are you know the arts that I've encountered were uh, ones that gave me reflection or that made me sad um, but those are important those are important things to to feel and to acknowledge um, there is it's hard <laughs> um, and when it's over and over again, the same kind of feeling, that's brutal. Um, and I wasn't creating, I wasn't picking up my camera, I wasn't um, writing. I actually did a lot of writing, which was, which was uh, cathartic and, and had its own type of growth. But I wasn't doing the usual um, sort of creative acts and actions. That's an interesting that point, because I think that's necessary to sometimes step away from that because it's too close to you. And I think, like, I, I took up clay at one point, uh, or um, even writing as well. And and uh, I think it's great to, I think it en enlarges our uh, area for receiving this creative zone. I, I, I believe it's that kind of relationship. And the more we can open ourselves to it and be willing to express it, um, then 
then I think it it, it, it can have great resonance for other people too. So that's why we have to do our art. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and it's a very uh, personal, uh, not just in an individual way, but it, it should be very personal and very rich. Um, as I say, autobiographical. It's, it's whatever you do has to come from, from the heart. Um, I, th I think that great art um, doesn't come from the status quo. It doesn't come from the easy or the or the normal or the regular or what you did last you know yesterday. Uh, it, it comes from sorrow. It comes from joy. It comes from anger, uh, frustration. It comes from hope, uh, and it comes from curiosity. So when you, when you, if you allow your your emotional state and your creative endeavors to kind of flow through those. Um, it, you can learn a lot about yourself, but wow, what a gift you can give to people who take the time to to experience your art. Exactly, and and you mentioned the experience there. So that's the that's the next step that I have found really rewarding in in the process of our journey as artists, because it is um, kind of hard to initially put your work out there to be looked at because. We, people may not understand it or it's quite personal and it brings back those memories you wonder if it'll do that for other people and and so it's heart-wrenching what can like you just had this great installation what can you encourage our, our listeners to um to be to motivate them to show their work basically in in some way or another which stride uh, does by the way it's great that is a big message of, of, of stride is, is to is to well to show uh the diverse ways that art can be presented, uh, made, experienced, and it is about the experience. Uh, Jinwen Perez Verity is here in the audience as oh, well. Yeah, great. Yes. And, and she and I yeah. um, have spent many coffee coffee dates uh, talking about these these very issues and in a, in, a, in a constructive, moving forward kind of way. And we, we both believe that, uh, um, that there are no correct answers um, there, there, and art is everywhere. And, and Jane, you and I even talked about this in our last Stride talk a year ago, um, how art is in all of us and that, that uh, once we kind of accept that art do doesn't just come from artists, um, the, op the opportunities for creativity and the, the acknowledgement that we ourselves, that everyone can be creative, whether you call yourself an artist or you call yourself a creative or not, um, it, it just, and that's talks a bit towards our Point that we're going to mention a little later about permission to create, um, but the the our event last night, the art after dark yeah. in the park, um, that was a pure example of uh, of an uh, an unusual, unexpected way to both present art and and experience art in a in a shared way that you know connected connected people who might not feel connected. Um, mm -hmm. I, there's so many, so many uh, benefits. Ways. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, benefits. And and I had people coming up to me, asking, you know, saying, you know, with a lot of curiosity. And I was like, thumbs up on this because it was it really uh, made me so happy that people were were curious enough to ask about it. They wanted to know more. Um, but I really, really hope that it was inspiring. That experience was inspiring to them um, to stay curious and be curious and ask more questions. I mean, I, I could talk, yeah. you and I could talk for hours on, on curiosity and the power of that. And that's again, something that Jim and I have, have, have uh, mulled over a lot and that we're trying what to I, What I also found wonderful is the collaboration that uh, you, you, you did together. Um, mm -hmm. on, and and how, how important do you think it is to reach out to other artists? I don't know who reached out or you guys have talked about these kind of things for a while, maybe. But I think, again, that could be something for other artists is reach out. Don't be afraid to talk with other artists about their work. And some kind of unique collaboration might spring from it. Um, so yeah, I just how did that come about actually the collaboration? Well, no, it is not. It, it was a <laughs> never reaching out. I drag poor Grant okay. to all, all the trouble all the time. <laughs> okay, good. Well, this, this actually this is a very historical reference because it, Jumen, you know, approached me on the playground probably about uh, you know ten years ago, and uh, said, "Hey, Grant, do you want to play?" And I said yes. And it's big been, mistake. It's a big mistake. <laughs> it's I, mistake. Uh, I think it's perfectly. So yes, and so these some of these ideas, some of the stuff we come up with, um, comes from that that idea of, of collaboration about who knows what could happen if we put 
different ingredients together that didn't seem to belong. Um, and then ideas seem to just fly out of that. And then you have, you have so many ideas, you have to pick which ones you're going <laughs> to do and put off till, till next time. Um, so yeah, that's a very powerful Congratulations uh, powerful on tool. that. Thank yeah. you. That's, Thank that's you. really wonderful. I want to talk one more thing about resonance before we move, move on to um, some of our other, other topics. I was just thinking today, and, and tell me if this is crazy, <laughs> it, very, it very well could be. Um, the idea of, of resonance uh, for me is the idea that we do, do something that, that, or we see a piece of art or see something in the world that feels right and it, it aligns with, uh, the, with our values or with what we believe is right or correct or beautiful or whatever. So again, we kind of, we, we categorize and, and, and try, to, try to match in the world things that mean something to us. So we, but when we're not really thinking about it, we just kind of go about our day. Uh, but I believe we are led by that, that resonance or that, that alignment. Uh, and we choose a path that is, that feels right. I, I keep coming to that idea of feels right. Um, and like a gut feeling. Or yeah, a gut feeling, but you don't even feel it. You don't even feel it. You're, you're almost, if, if you have, if you if you understand your, your own values and your own beliefs of what is beautiful or what is right or what is the correct way. You'll, you'll choose your friends based on that. You'll, you'll uh, uh, donate to charities based on that. You'll donate to charities at all based on some of those, those values. Um, you know, the way you vote, the way you, you know, if you take transit or, or if you, uh, all these so many different choices we make, but it, it, those things align with, with uh, deliberate choices, subconscious choices sometimes in the background. I was thinking about watching the news today, and there was talk of recent uh, uh, old growth forest uh, uh, blockades. Uh, people sitting on the, on, the, on the road blocking traffic to protest old growth logging. There is the, the trucker uh, blockade in, in Ottawa. And I'm like, I don't want to get into the politics of it, but these, these, news, these media, news media were basically just presenting these, uh, these events as nuisances or as this is just what's happening in your city. Make sure you take a different route when you're going downtown. And once in a while, they'll talk about the actual issue that is being discussed. Um, I guess often they do, but rarely does that kind of uh, medium invite the viewer to act, to question their own alignment. Like yeah. we, we watch it and we either agree with it, disagree with it. We think, oh, what a hassle or what, you know, I don't, I don't think this is, this is just a waste of time or whatever, but how does it, how do those issues that these people are, are, you know, protesting or yelling from the rooftops, how does that actually align with your, your beliefs or your beliefs, your beliefs? Um, really so how does it, how does this actually resonate as opposed to just, this is what's happening. This is what they're saying. Next story. Yeah. So what, what I hear is that you're saying that if you have experienced resonance through art, that you become more comfortable with that experience of resonance for yourself with things of, of life, whether it's presented, uh, whether it's presented one way or another. That way, yeah, it's it's not doesn't even it, art yeah. is, is one way where resonance really I think uh, can show itself. Resonance, yeah, resonance can can really happen. You can really notice it, but we don't often think about how resonance or our uh, the world's alignment with our with our own values. Uh, you know, you don't believe that's relevant. We don't really think of it. So I just thought it was an interesting, maybe an interesting parallel. I don't know if that's a yeah. real thing. It's but, probably not documented, but I just got to think <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's all related, just like our life relates to our art and our art relates to our life. So yeah. it, it's it's that resonance is something I think that we get to be more aware of uh, as we experience different things. And it's interesting you said the word align because I had written the same thing down. It's For me, it's like a, an alignment of the body, soul, and spirit. And, and so all of that is, is vibrating, it's alive, and we feel something personal and we wanna move on it. So I think that's good. We should just kind of be able to keep looking for what resonates with us and art helps us do that. It does. And, and yeah, so I'm glad that we can make the work. That's, that also resonates with, you know, when we're experiencing the actual process, but to, to send it out there and, and allow it like children to be resonating with mm. whoever comes in contact. And we don't know what it may do. Like even yeah. your video said, you know, it, this, this is visually uh, could, 
caused, I don't know what it, it little, it contains it's flashing fun. images. Yeah, it was meant as a, as a health warning for people who, who, yeah. uh, who, uh, had to be careful with, with how they encounter, uh, engaged with right. the world. Yeah. So, so it's good. Like we, we just become to know ourselves more. And I think that's really important. And yeah, so, it's a, so it's a call, it's a bit of a call yeah. to action, I think, is, is what, what I'm yes. hoping that this becomes. It's like, yeah. under, learn yourself more, know yourself more. And I, I really believe art can help us do that. It's a, it's an easy way to, to uh, address our feelings and our emotions. Uh, and that I think is a, is a the first step to, to kind of knowing who we are. So then people come up, well, I don't even know how to use a camera. They might tell you like it's, and they'll tell me, I don't know how to paint. Well, I say, mm -hmm. it's not about that. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's about trying something, you know, ask yourself, what if we're back to that, be curious. Mm -hmm. And, and if you, okay, we're right back to, you know, what kind of skills do you need? Sometimes it does help to have the skills and the rules. We're back to rules of design and painting it as an artist, professional artist. It, it's great to know those. It's great to have had critiques on that and to be able to build on what is expected or, or known or has passed down through history. And then to work with that, like not to discount it. It's not art isn't about always shunning the past or, 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 you know, turning it upside down just for shock, <laughs> even though that could be resonating with them, you know, we're all, it, it's really freeing art is where you can experience all sorts of things and express it. It's, um, you know, for us to, to, to be able to do. And so I think we should to, to take that courage it takes courage. Is what it, it's like so art is like a sandbox where we can play yeah. in a safe place and try on different realities and different uh, different things. We have a we have a question from from the group. Uh, can I take a question from Simone Jane? Is that okay? Yeah, Let's, we're about the halfway point. Let's see. Uh, I, thank you very you much. Me, Simone? I, yeah, hey, I can. I just I just had a really I love what you're talking about about rent. Um, you know, just resonance. Um, I think one of the things I'm wanting to ask is, is if you're putting your life and your soul and your heart into your artwork, do you think that's what we feel like when we see it? And that's why we love it is that we feel like the heart you put into it. And, and so if the resonance is for you in terms of what you feel is right, maybe that's what we see in it when we see your art is that it's, it, it, re it reflects what we also feel. And so that's my question is, do you think that's what it is when we see a piece of art and we go, Oh my God, that's just amazing. And you have no idea why you just think it's amazing, mm -hmm. but you do. And I wonder if I'm, if when I see that for me and, if, for instance, when I see a piece of art that I really love and I can't tell you exactly why I love it, maybe I'm feeling the heart and the soul of you guys you're, that you're putting into it. So that's my question. Do you think that is what's happening? I, I'm going to take this a little one first and I want to give it to you, Jane. That's an excellent question. Um, I, there, are, there are a couple of ways it could go. An artist puts their heart and soul into, thing, into, a, into a piece. Um, with a particular message or particular gut feeling and a resonance, uh, a recipient of that or a, a, someone experiencing that on the other side might see and feel exactly the same thing. And that not that a beautiful type of communication? It could go a different direction though, where I could create something that I think is quite beautiful and uplifting and say whimsical, but if that I use the, the reference to like a game board. If, if that experience sort of better fits a, a melancholy kind of sad feeling that someone else has, then there's not necessarily a disconnect because, because art is not meant to be a 100% translatable message uh, with, with rules and, oh, you got it wrong. Some people are afraid they're going to get the art message wrong, so they don't even engage. They don't go to galleries because they're, they're intimidated by it because we've been taught you know, what are you trying to say with this piece? And then that's what we all have to hear. That's not the case. Some people don't even put titles on their on their images because they don't want to influence what the the recipient is feeling. So, uh, Jane, what do you think about that? About about the connection I, I from the resonance at the, at the source? I certainly believe that, and I that's why I put my heart and soul into the work, and I'm willing to to send it out. But I think it's more than that. So you can you can actually I feel a little bit kind of that it's not only that 
And I think other things come to it from the outside, from the experiences or from, who knows if the doorbell rings and you do a new little, you know, your flashlight thing on your lighting mm -hmm. right. and, and it'll create something new. And, and that's a surprise or something altogether, even um, not uh, conscious. But I think that's why it's so nice that when that happens, you feel like you've connected to the artist. And I like that about this question is, it is about people that have made this. It's handmade or created with our minds and our, uh, even if it's computers or whatever we're using, pens and uh, brushes. I think we can, we feel that uh, connection with people. And I think that's why we should keep, keep on doing it. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, thanks, so. well, that's cool. Good, uh, good, uh, good point. So have we talked about resonance enough, you think, Jane? I love it though. It's resonated yeah, with me. <laughs> we, we could go on and on and on. There, there, I think there's so many sort of entry points to that uh, to that topic. But I do want to I do want to get to our um, sort of permission to create section because you and I and, and it, it I think it touches on a lot of the other things we've already talked about. Um, not just uh, finding motivation, but imagine you're motivated and you're gung-ho and you have uh, you have the inspiration um, and, and the creative spirit is in you, um, but what are some other barriers that someone might face that will prevent people from putting it out there? Because you use the word, put it out there, and, and, and you're almost saying it like you have to kind of get up your gumption to make that happen. So what is that, what's the gumption part there? Well, I've heard of this term called resistance, okay? Um, and, and I think we just need to realize there will always be some kind of wall or some barrier or stone in the way. And I think we just have to acknowledge that that's part of the process. And fear, of course, is the biggest thing that keeps us from doing anything. And I, I've tried to ask myself, is fear motivating me? Because it shouldn't be a motivator. Mm. And, and most of the time it is, is why I don't do something or, or you know don't put it out there. And so you're really being motivated by fear to not do it if it is the case i mean you can analyze these things for yourself so fear is like black paint to me i don't use black paint i just take it out of my toolbox and you know you can send that <laughs> that's that's the, the take i take to fear and to resistance it's not like you're going to eliminate them um you know you're playing chess it's like you you can try to take the, the that fear chess pawn off but it's going to show up on there again in another game so, so here's here's a, here's a class you need to teach painting with black paint I mean, if, if this is, if this, because it's true, it sounds like black is very symbolic. It's a very powerful yeah. entity and it, it almost has a personality um, and, and you are using it. You're not using it as a tool or it's, it's, it, it's absence not to make is my colors, But yeah. I use it for yeah. my sketches because it's gotcha. strong and has structure. So there's all these, uh, uh, just sort of using it as an analogy for fear. But um, I want my colors to vibrate. So we're back to the resonance and the black seems to kill it, like just black pigment. Mm. Uh, so I mix my blacks so that they unify um, opposites or whatever I, you know, it looks dark, but the, it's just something I sort of trying to, to put into my practice to remind myself that I'm not gonna do this out of fear. And I'm gonna realize that, you know, I'll be resist, feel this resistance to, to not do it. Like it'll almost seem like I shouldn't. But mm. if I if I know that my work can have the opportunity to touch somebody, then I have mm -hmm. to overcome that. And that's sort of how I've gotten to, um, you know, even the permission to create, because it'll be like, who are you to to keep doing this? Like we can all, you know, whatever you <laughs> whatever goes through your head. <laughs> so sure so backing up a, a few steps yeah. for, for some of our, our, our listeners here. Um, what are some sources of resistance that that might need to be dealt with here? Mm, that's a good resistance question. That, Do you have that any? Do you want to give some examples well, first? I'll think about well, I, I'm, I think of you know things that I've experienced. The um, what is it? The what is it called when you're when you feel you're too amateur? There's like oh, a yeah. uh, imposter, the, imposter imposter syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. It's, you you came up with that way way too fast, Junwei. <laughs> 
It's, make, it's making me nervous. Yeah, because because I'm that, an imposter, clearly. No, because <laughs> I feel like an imposter all the time. See, it's it's and and we're and we are confident. You know, put it out yeah. there kind of people, but this is. I a don't real know. Thing. We're com- I don't know if we're confident. I think we're just crazy and. <laughs> that does I am an imposter. Why can't you be an imposter? Just go with it. Be creative well, with it. Say I'm an imposter. I, know, I, I think that's the thing. I, we just we just admit it and then go with it and like that's what the other the other day that i was mentioning about uh you and i like grant you and me how uh you know like we are just authentic i don't know if we're entertaining Mm -hmm. but we are authentic and that seemed to entertain people so that's just how it works as soon as as soon as you address the imposter idea you're 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 saying that someone is coming someone has come up with some kind of rule or some kind of uh, direction that you're supposed to take by by acknowledging that you know we're joking around about imposter syndrome is, is great but for the people who, who really feel that understand that there are no set rules there are not there are no set roles you're not trying to be there's no one for you to be so I think that's an important kind of hurdle to to get over uh, so permission to create, you know, you're answering a call to create, you, you feel it. Um, and, and that is your, that's your ticket into creativity. That's all you need. You, you don't need to have a degree or an education in it, um, experience, uh, it doesn't have to be in your family, whatever. Um, so a couple yeah, of things for me. I look at it this way. It helped to teach, uh, refugee kids that couldn't speak English. I, I did this after school program. And I didn't really want to do it because like, will I be able to converse with them? <laughs> and language wasn't part of it. They, you know, you give them a piece of paper and you show them kind of what they can do with certain lines and colors, and then they would do something. With it. And they understood. And so, so here's their permission. Like we, I couldn't give them permission except, you know, I gave them tools. So I think if, if that experience, I was able to see a response, a good, you know, something come out, why can't I do that to myself? I think we need to give ourselves that permission. Who else is going to give you? Why are we looking at for it from somebody else? I know we we like the acknowledgement of people, other artists, uh, jury uh, exhibitions or galleries, uh, crit, you know, critics. It, it's 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 part of life to have comments on the work. So um, that can be hard, uh, but if if we continue give ourselves permission to keep going regardless of that you can kind of have to just realize that it's it's going to happen and and it's hard mm-hmm. but um i think you, you just have to give yourself permission just practice it as if you were not you were somebody else maybe that makes it easier maybe mm-hmm. we just don't know how to do that for ourselves but because i was able to do that with the children i thought well i need somebody to do that for me yeah. <laughs> you know so so you take classes and that, and that's all great, but it, it can't always be motivated by another person. It can actually, you can be that person. So talk to yourself that way as if you were talking to a child that you'd like to encourage to create. And, and how would you and, do it? And express. And, yes. and how, can, how can anyone say you have to express correctly? Yeah. Well, what is that? <laughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking the other day about, um, as, as I was kind of leading up to this talk tonight, that it's exciting to create uh, something out of nothing, which is part of that creative process, but it's even more exciting to create something out of something. And I'll, I'll explain what that means, or what I mean by that. Um, if, if everything seems to have been, if you think everything's been done already, try to think, find a way to do something that hasn't been done yet. There's still more, you can still push um, I'm a big advocate for, for bending rules, uh, not, not laws. They're not even rules. Not, not, not government laws and police and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, bending expectations around creativity and photography and art, for example, um, or specifically. And thinking in ways that aren't expected. Uh, and I've given myself permission to do that because I, I'm, not a trained, I'm not a trained artist. I haven't learned or have, haven't had rules drilled into me. 
I've learned from examples and, and you, you talked about getting inspiration from, from other artists or other, other media. Um, and I, so I'm, I'm soaking all this stuff in and I feel very free and liberated be, partly because I don't have a, I think, because I don't have a structured uh, arts training uh, and education behind me. Uh, Maybe it doesn't get in the me, way. Holding me back. Yes, I think that might hold me back. Or it may take long for me to go, wait a minute, these, this is all awesome and I got good grades and whatever. I seem to please someone's opinion of, of what good art is. Don't, let's not get started yeah. on that one. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you make art, if you just express and, and forget about what uh, someone says is good or what, what falls into whatever category, um, then I think that's a huge sort of self permission you're, you're giving yourself. Yes. And then it takes so much pressure off uh, and allows for those gestures, the, the fourth line in your, in, your, in your three line kind of starting uh, drill. Um, it just allows you to just follow what resonates with you, follow the path that feels right. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't have anything else to do with what anyone else thinks is right. It's all from you. And it might help to dial down any kind of uh, thoughts. That's how I look at it. It's like a, a radio in the background going, you can't do this. You don't have mm -hmm. an art degree. I don't have an art mm -hmm. degree, but I've taken awesome. the uh, classes. <laughs> um, and my uh, dad had an ar architectural degree in fine arts. Um, and, and he said it, it, it's great experience to go through all that, but it's so many years that you can learn very quickly some of the skills. And then it doesn't allow you the time that it takes to do your authentic work. So if you, he basically told me, if, if I want to uh, create, spend time creating rather than learning. Wow. And, and I mean, it's part and parcel because as you create, you'll want to learn something to add to it, right? So it just feeds off each other. And again, so I, I think that that should be the permission is that you don't need the degree or the instruction first. I think you need to mm. try and play, imitate and imagine and then when you need the extra help, then go get it. Like I had trouble with values actually, like darks and lights because I love color so much. I didn't look at the patterns. And um, so I did a lot of no tan sketches, these black and white sketches to see the pattern a bit more. I practiced that a lot. And it helped so my work, but I still don't do it. Hmm? So it sounds like your, your idea or your approach to uh, education is, is a hybrid of, of trying and experimenting and and, and then re, then kind of reaching a, a, a point where you're like i want to i want to know more and I, i'm going to reach over here for uh, a resource that is going to help me build on this and then it's going to launch me forward again and, and you're kind of adding and building as you go as you said as you said instead of just learn 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 and master 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 there's got to be some creative creativity and expression built into that maybe to make a, a the most rich experience possible. Yeah. And don't be surprised that it's not an art class, right? Like you yeah, might take yeah, up yeah. typing or gardening or something and you, it, it does something that can add to your, your process. So all of life, live it because it's going to feed your work, good or bad, and it'll just uh, help you work through it and help you work through your work. And, and that, that's, it's like life. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's living. <laughs> it's a living mm -hmm. process, an mm -hmm. exciting one. That's why sort of take away. That works for me. <laughs> um, Grant, yeah. So how, how I'm you... trying to think of another another uh, kind of uh, uh, way that people can can give themselves permission. I mean, if you're listening out here, I give you permission to yes. create, to make art. <laughs> if that's all, if, if that helps, awesome. I, I'm, I'm sure Jane would, would echo that. Yes. But if you need to hear from we another give creative, you permission. yeah, another creative person to to try and to to play and to experiment and to express, and that there are no right answers. I hope that I hope that helps. And I would love to see it actually. So if you're willing to email me anything you do, ah, um, cool. You know, uh, please do. Uh, I don't critique really because again, it's subjective, and uh, but I do always see something that resonates. So. This is why we. It's nice to to put your work out there somehow, where where you feel, you know, you, you feel good about. Uh, let that resonate with you too. <laughs> I, think, I think Jane and I are, are safe. Would be a, a safe place to to play and experiment and to express and to share. Um, and it's important to find those people around you that uh, share that um, uh, an idea of exploration and of experimentation and imagination. 
uh, surround yourself with people who support you um, in whatever creative endeavor you're in. Um, That's really Because if you do it by yourself, which is so easy to do these days, or so common these days, as artists in general, we often do things on, just on our own, plug it away. Find find your your tribe, find your 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 team, your supportive uh, your support network, um, okay. and you'll that kind of that will give you uh, a lot of shoulders to to climb on and to to rise up above what you thought you could do. And and even our spouses, Grant, you know they're they're professionals and and not in the art field, but it's so nice to see their support in the way they that they do. You know, you don't mm -hmm. get the same creative you know, shop talk like we're doing tonight. So I really appreciate yeah. this. But I do look for people that are always encouraging in whatever aspects of your life. And that's what I'm thankful for that I do receive. And I'm sure you do too. And that's what allows me to continue to, that's the permission I get too. It's not, it's a subtle mm -hmm. permission, mm -hmm. but it's, it's somebody it feel, who loves It feels good to hang out with those people, right? Yes. W whether so do they're that fellow, fellow sure. creatives or just other people who support you, it's, it's, it's yeah. good medicine. Even if they think you're crazy, it's okay. As long as... I wouldn't have it any other way. If, <laughs> if they're patient with craziness, then they're then they're good people. Yeah. <laughs> any questions? Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to open open the field or open up the chat window, or if anyone has a, wants to raise their hand, uh, we'll try to look at the, the group. Um, we'd love to entertain questions or comments or feedback um, from uh, from the floor. I know Lori Lori very uh, added some nice comments about how. Uh, the event the other night was a, 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 a social event in the end, which was kind of nice to, to have in our community uh, and that she was inspired by that. So thanks, Lori, for, for chiming in. I can't see if, the, oh, I do see hands. Can I ask? Oh, I artist. Can click, Hi, Artith Ellis. I can click, I'm going to click on, on <laughs> Artith, asking you to unmute. Go for it, Artith. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, hi. Um, I so enjoy. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate too much. I, I, there's probably a lot of artists here or budding artists or people that have um, been taking that journey all through their life. Not me so much. My thing is sort of, um, I love language and words. And I, I have to say, I've always been captivated by hearing um artistic people who are, who are really articulate talking about their their craft their journey their experiences and I think you're both very articulate so I I really <laughs> I tuned in tonight just just to hear the the lovely language around your creativity because I think I'm I'm not sure every if every I mean maybe every artist is if you really you know ask them they they will be very forthcoming and um or maybe for some people it's really private but i i really enjoy hearing the language of art hmm. um and um so that for me is 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 very engaging um i do love to watch your videos <laughs> jane um uh I just I find it you know just very relaxing, very moving. Seeing seeing your process and just seeing how you relaxed you are with yourself. Oh, I've got a dog. I've got I'm an imposter. Well, you know you make it look like like. No, I, um, I guess what I wanted to ask is have you ever this this never comes across in your work, but you have you ever. Um, been negative about your own work because you seem so positive all the time about the process because for me this is a very inhibiting characteristic that I have it's never going to be good enough like I'm not going to start anything because mm -hmm. I tend to be more creative with words like writing thing but you know I've dabbled as a child like I I, I remember my big thing was horses so I got one of those <laughs> how to draw horses and you know because you put the hours in you get not yeah. so bad at them in a static sort of way and, and not in a very necessarily interesting way but but perhaps you know anatomically correct let's just put it that way but, but you, you still you still weren't 100 percent happy with them or something you're, no, you're talking I'm about pretty, you know like okay. I, mean, it's, I guess my point is um you both seem very free about it. And do you ever get down on yourself or, or, or full of uh, um, have doubts or okay. are you, have you, 
and I'm, I'm not talking about just now, um, but throughout the process, what has given you, you talked about giving yourself permission, and I think that's very powerful. Um, and I apologize if my dog came in and opened the door, and if, if I can I can go and shut it down. I'm a dog person, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there might be a lot of background noise. Anyway, I'm, I'm using a lot of words to just say, I'm very impressed with how this giving yourself permission and just, you know, sort of letting go. And I think there, that's a big, a big part of it. it. And I, yeah. yeah. So well, you've answered it somewhat already. It's interesting as we, as you keep using words and language, that's a very good thing about, uh, uh, about that. If you talk about your work, um, you'll find yourself either being positive or negative. And I do try to catch myself and eliminate again, the black, the, the, the part that doesn't build it up because how is it going to help it? So I am always looking for the words that will describe what I'm doing positively. It's like, if I don't like an area, I'll say, okay, I'm going to work on that area, but I like this area. I'm not going to say, I don't like it. It's bad. It's so I don't give it uh, names that are demeaning because it brings my spirit down. So that's how I work through it. I am. I try to use positive words. I try to use positive insights on every aspect of my work because there is, there's always two sides. Uh, Grant, do you, do you, how do you uh, well, for me, that? Uh, I, the thing that came to mind was something that I, that I came up with a while back, but it reminded me of this, that when I create a piece of art these days, uh, I, I love showing people, I love showing people my stuff, not to say, look what I've done, but look what, look at what's possible. Especially yeah. when I, when I, and I believe that I've cracked something open and I've, and I'm, I've, I'm revealing something new that I think has never been seen before. I find that really exciting, really uh, exhilarating. Um, and if I can share that with someone and, and they, they go, wow, I've never, you know, how did you do that? Or I've never seen that before. Those are, that's, it's beautiful words. Those are beautiful yeah. words when I hear it. And I heard it last night actually. And I was like, I have to write that down. I have to quote you, yeah. uh, that it was something they had never seen before. And again, it, this is a, at the root of, of curiosity for me, um, is to, to, to seek out, uh, new things. And it's unfortunately prevents me maybe from diving deep into a particular topic or a project because I have something else waiting, like tapping me on the shoulder saying, well, how about me? Try try this. What's going to happen if you put these together? So I, I, I move around a lot with these and I might revisit something, but I, I get a, a great thrill from uh, from uh, sort of exposing and, and pushing at, the, at those new things and love sharing that with people. Um, there was another hand I saw. So Simone's hand, I'm going to give the last question to you, unless people want to hang out after Are eight, but I'm going to, did Simone get invited? Or hang on, I'm going to ask you to unmute Simone. Sure. Hi. Hi. Um, so it's funny because um, what um, Arth was talking about was that permission. And that was kind of along the lines of what I was thinking, but mostly when you guys give yourself permission to just let your art flow, are you doing it for you? Or are you doing it with the idea that someone else will see it? And I think that's a question that I always think about when, because if I, you know, try to paint something or do anything like that, I get lost in the process and it doesn't matter to me at the end what it looks like because, because mm -hmm. I just love the process of it. It just mm -hmm. makes me calm and two hours can be gone in like it seems like a blink of an eye and so I just want to know what you guys do it for like do you when you're doing that process do you actually think of the people who will see it or are you just pouring yourself into it are you shaking your head <laughs> I'll comment on that because it seems like oh um what am I thinking of in the process no not in the process but to motivate me into my studio or not um each day I will do something um, that gets me, if it's reading or, or looking at art, going to a show, I do that so that it is for the other. It will, it will connect. So there's always that purpose and that's what will keep me doing the work. And um, because it's, it's, it doesn't, I don't feel like it before I start, but once I start and once I'm in the flow, then I get rewarded and I feel great. And I don't know what the, the dog could, could be eating my 
dinner and I wouldn't know. So, you know, you get into that flow. And I think that's that's a lovely place to get into. It's it's this openness, I believe. And uh, and so much can come from that. And I think it, the more we practice it, we give our permission to even the permission comes from you don't have the time. And I go, I'm going to make the time, even if it's five minutes. And you have that choice. So we have the power to to make time for flow to happen. So that's my takeaway. Go ahead, Grant. Hey, do you uh, ever? It's it's eight oh four, but I have I could talk twenty minutes about this one. I'll, but I'll yeah. make, I'll make it short. Uh, again, thanks for asking that. Um, and I'm going to talk. I'm going to mention something that Junwen taught me uh, years ago in our days with the Living Room Art uh, project. Um, I used to make art for that I was imagining would be on a wall somewhere. It's going to be a, a decor piece, just something that looks nice, looks pretty, looks captivating, that maybe would connect with someone because, but because they thought it looked beautiful. Um, and then that's how I was approaching art initially. And when Jin Wen invited me slash pulled me into the Living Room Art Project, um, she taught me that of the value and the, the, the uh, uh, kind of a, a great goal of creating art that connects people that that uh, not not always connects the artist to the recipient or the ex person experiencing it but connects the, the the collective group of people who might be experiencing that art using art as a, as a as a glue or as a catalyst for community connection and i was like wow this is this is amazing stuff uh, and that's partly how we got connected with you simone with the north Bridgeview neighborhood house uh, shared goals of you know, finding that secret sauce to to help people connect with each other and uh, using art as a, as a tool for that. So um, you're stuck with us now. Um, uh, but it, it's a quicker. Another quick answer to that is that I don't and I, and I don't want this to sound selfish or flippant. But I make art for for me. I don't make art for you. Uh, but you're invited. You're invited to to come along. Um, so <laughs> So that's, that's I love that. Too. I love. <laughs> so, uh, folks, I want to thank Simone for for helping us uh, to to end on a on a such a great uh, great topic. Um, Jane, what do you think? Are we? Yeah, we, it's more of a bookmark in it instead of an end to the conversation because there's so much more we could say and and so many things more we could cover. But I, I want to thank you for 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 joining tonight and offering some ideas and inspiration to the folks tonight. Yeah, well, I think we've shared a lot of lovely uh, aspects of the journey as artists, and I just hope you take that with you and encourage you to keep doing what you're doing and hope it brings you some joy, too. So thanks so much, you guys, for, for everyone for, for joining in tonight. Suvi, thanks for all your tech support with uh, with the Zoom, if you're still there, uh, and for your, your support with the chat window there, too, Jin Wen. It's awesome. Oh, um, and my book is available at the library, by the way. <laughs> no kidding. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, and you guys do, do check out uh, um, uh, Jane's uh, some of the links that she has in there. I'd be delighted if you if you check popped into my Instagram or, or website and, and Jane's as well. You'll be able to see some of the art that we're talking about, understand a bit about the process behind our words. Uh, I, I believe we, we really do live this this experience um, and you'll see some hints of that in some of the things we've, we've offered online and some other some other ways to connect with us if you have other questions or comments or you just want to to, to follow the madness um those yeah. are some ways to do so so thanks very much everyone stay curious and stay creative we uh we really appreciate your your involvement tonight thank you thanks so Good much night. you betcha have a great night everybody thanks you guys that was amazing thank you and for those who are still here, yes, Junwen is added to the to the chat window. We're doing uh, some musical concerts uh, online through Stride. Uh, check out the details in, in the chat window there. Go to uh, wearebernaby.com uh, uh, to the Stride page and find out more information because it's not over. We've got until the 5th of February and we even have our uh, Stride Art at the Shadbolt uh, extended uh, art show running until March 22nd. So it's a a wonderful opportunity for our uh, some Burnaby artists, uh, including yours truly, uh, to have some art in the shad bolt. That's really kind of cool. So some art does exist in galleries. It doesn't have to, but some does. So good night, everybody. Thank you.